Welcome to episode 4 of the Mythic Pod here on Mythic United. I'm your host Tony, and today is the last part of our mini-series where we were covering all of the major console players and predicting what's going to happen for them in 2018. In our first week we covered the Xbox, last week we covered Nintendo, and this week we will finish with PlayStation. So we're going to follow the same format here, we're going to go over the games that we know are coming out, the games we expect will come out, and the games I predict will come out, slash get delayed, so on and so forth, as well as any hardware and software announcements I could see happening. We're also going to give 2017 a quick look. Now I encourage you to listen to last week's episode about Nintendo and the week prior, which was about Xbox, and kind of compare these podcasts to this one, and you can really get a good picture of what's happening at this point in terms of the console space, and... Disclaimer here, I don't own a PS4, so a lot of these games I'm, I'm familiar with, um, but I haven't played them all, and therefore I can't really comment on specific feelings about them, um, but what I can do is I can provide a general overview for the games I, I do know about, as well as uh, give, them, give you guys some info about the, the games at a high level. So, without further ado, let's jump into PlayStation. The PS4 is continuing to sell incredibly well. It's finished ahead of the Xbox One every single month, almost every single month this generation. And there's a very, very good chance that the PS4 will crest 100 million consoles sold, which is impressive for any console generation. So PlayStation's it's it's leaps and bounds ahead of Xbox and Nintendo at this point, but Nintendo just started. Um, in terms of console sales, it doesn't mean that they're going to necessarily sell the most this generation. I could see the Switch surpassing it. As well as what we saw with the Xbox 360 and PS3 is that the Xbox 360 had a massive lead. Similar to the lead right now that um, PS4 has on the Xbox One. But the PS3 actually ended up catching up and it actually ended up beating the Xbox 360 in the end by a very, very small margin. So I could see that happening. But for the time being, PlayStation is the dominant console player. Now, PlayStation had a massive line of exclusives in 2017, so we're going to jump into that. Some of them are bigger than others, but it's impressive nonetheless to see the quantity of exclusives that Sony was able to put out, and also the amount of quality exclusives. Sony easily had the most exclusives in 2017, um, compared to Microsoft and Nintendo, and they managed to have a lot of quality games in there as well, so... Let's jump into 2017 real quick before we get into 2018. And again, some of these games are bigger than others, as well as a lot of these games I haven't played, so I'm really just going to go over game titles at this point, but um, I hope that this helps illustrate what's happening here. So we started the year in January of 2017 with Gravity Rush 2. We also had Resident Evil 7 Biohazard uh, VR, so of course Resident Evil 7 was on the Xbox, but VR option for consoles anyways, was only available um, on PSVR, and uh, many claim that if this, if you had PSVR, that it was the best way to experience Resident Evil 7, and one of the reasons for that was that the game was designed from the ground up for VR, which a lot of, a lot of games that kind of patch in VR that are, that are bigger, um, it ends up just being shoehorned in and it's not done correctly. This game, it was built for the ground up for a virtual reality experience, so it, it works very well, it, I've heard it's very terrifying and, and immersive, which is which is great. We also have Yakuza 0, which came out in January. Kingdom Hearts 2.8 HD, um, which again includes some of the uh, mobile Kingdom Hearts games that have released in the current in the past years, um, as well as provides a little bit of insight into Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, Tales of Berseria, so if you're familiar with the Tales series, uh, Tales of Vesperia, for example, uh, Tales of Berseria uh, was exclusive to PlayStation last year. And then in February, we had Neo, and I don't know too much about this game, but I do know that Neo, critically, was a surprise hit. Um, from what I've seen, it does look a lot like Nier Autonoma, which we'll get into later, but um, it may be more like a Devil May Cry as well, but Neo was a, was a surprise hit and it was rated very, very highly. And then we have Horizon Zero Dawn, which came out in February, which if you haven't heard about Horizon Zero Dawn, then I, I don't know how you haven't heard about it. It was one of the best-selling games of last year. And it's actually one of the highest rated games of last year. It was in Game of the Year contention pretty much all the way throughout the year. And, uh, and I'm sure in some circumstances it actually ended up winning it, uh, beating out even Zelda and Mario for certain outlets. But regardless, Horizon Zero Dawn, it was a big new IP for Sony. And it was developed by the former developers of Killzone, which is interesting. It's a big open world, kind of robot dinosaur looking thing. I'm sure you've seen commercials um, 
it's a game I really, really want to try out. I've heard Horizon Zero Dawn is absolutely stunning uh, visually, um, and from what I've seen, I, I know it is, and uh, also a very, just a very deep game, and a game that you can lose yourself in for 30 to 40 hours. And you get into March, and you get Nier Autonomo, which I mentioned before in the podcast, and if you haven't played the first Nier, it's, the first Nier wasn't very good in my opinion. I actually watched one of my friends play that game, and uh, it wasn't, we ended, we ended up uh, ragging on him most of the time, because we're like, why are you playing this game, man? It's so weird. But uh, Nier Autonoma, the the sequel to Nier, is actually, it's improved a lot over the first game. It's made it more, I don't I don't want to say mainstream, because really it is just the first game, but it's it's gotten rid of all of the, all the backtracking. It's gotten rid of a lot of the weird mechanics, and it's, it's really just, it's toned down, but all in, in all the right ways, so... Where the first Nier was a little little too much to handle, in my opinion, it's uh, the, the second Nier, Nier Autonoma, is, uh, is one of the better things. We also have MLB The Show, which MLB The Show always comes out in, in March. And the reason I mention this game is that you can't get a, a true baseball game on any other platform. It's the only good baseball game you can get. And it's if you're into baseball, it's a good reason to own a PS4 for that. MLB The Show is absolutely incredible each and every year. It's one of the best sports sims games you can get, period. And uh, it's a good reason to own a PS4, like I said. And even more Kingdom Hearts. Uh, this one doesn't count too much, but since I like Kingdom Hearts so much, I'm putting it on the list. Kingdom Hearts 1.5 plus 2.5 HD Remix. Oh god, what a title, eh? So, this includes all the past remasters that have come out for the PlayStation 3, but brought up into the PS4. So you're getting all of the main games, you know, Kingdom Hearts, Kingdom Hearts 2. You're also getting all the all the DS games, all the Game Boy games and stuff like that, like Chain of Memories, Birth by Sleep, Dream Drop Distance, all that kind of stuff. So you're getting um, kind of a complete picture of the Kingdom Hearts series with that, plus Kingdom Hearts 2.8 HD, which I really don't know why they don't just release a Kingdom Hearts like collection at this point, and it's all on one disc and it's everything. Like, Why does there have to be a 1.5, a 2.5, and a 2.8? I'll never understand that. But regardless, that was only on PlayStation as well. And I really wish they brought this over to the Xbox because Xbox is getting Kingdom Hearts 3. And a lot of Xbox gamers, if they've only been with Xbox, they're not going to exactly know what the hell is going on. There's a lot to Kingdom Hearts, unfortunately. And I think that if they release an entire collection on the Xbox, it would it'd really bring everyone up to speed. Now, the developers uh, and at Square, they've said that they're focusing on finishing Kingdom Hearts 3 first. They need to get that game out. And then if the demand is there, they'll release the past collection. And I think that's still okay. You can release Kingdom Hearts 3 first, but I think you need to get 1.5, 2.5, and 2.8 on the Xbox at some point. Anyways, back to PlayStation. We also had Persona 5 in April, and I'm not too familiar about the Persona series, but I know that it is a very high-rated series. Um, it's 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 much talked about on the internet as one of the best reasons to, to play PlayStation in general. Again, it was one of the highest-rated and best-selling games of the year. Persona is always very good, from what I understand, and Persona 5 is actually, some say it's actually the best Persona game, which is awesome. We have Dragon Quest Heroes 2, which came out in April, as well as Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood. Um, so Final Fantasy XIV is a MMORGP that you can play on the PlayStation, and this was just an expansion to that. And Final Fantasy XIV is, it's it's incredible that, again, these these MMOs that are Final Fantasy are only coming out on PlayStation when, again, Xbox also gets Final Fantasy XV. I don't understand that, to be honest. But either way, big, big MMO RGP expansion here. RPG, sorry. RPG expansion. As well as we, we also had the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, which made waves this year. Brought back all the classic Crash games, except for the mo- the best one, to be honest, which is Crash Team Racing. It's the exact same as the old Crash games. It just brings it up to the graphical standards of 2017. It looks awesome. It's the exact same gameplay. 19, late 1990s to early 2000 quirks and all. While the gameplay doesn't exactly hold up, it's still fun to play through. We also had Final Fantasy XII, the Zodiac Age, release in July. We had Lawbreakers come out in August, which is kind of like an Overwatch, kind of, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's basically an Overwatch game, to be honest, and that came out exclusively on the PlayStation in August. Something interesting about Lawbreakers is that uh, Cliff Blazinski, the guy who uh, is re- well known for the Gears series, Gears 1, 2, 3, um, he was behind Lawbreakers, so. I suppose we had Uncharted The Lost Legacy, which is by far the worst Uncharted game, but <laughs> giving it a bad rap there, a bad Uncharted game 
It's kind of like pizza. Even when it's bad, it's still pretty damn good. Um, I've heard I've heard Uncharted: The Last Legacy. I haven't played it myself, but from uh, people who are kind of more invested in the PlayStation universe, like uh, the people over at Kind of Funny, for example, they've said, "Yeah, it's it's a great game. It's a good Uncharted game." But you know, comparing it to one, two, three, and even um, the game that came out on Vita, I forget, I'm forgetting the name of it right now. Um, it it just doesn't really hold up, but. In terms of the gameplay, it's all there. Uh, the story just isn't up to par. As well as there's Knack 2 in September, which I have no idea why they made a second Knack game. I have no idea what this game's about. We had Gran Turismo Sport in October, which is the best Gran Turismo in a very, very long time. Probably since Gran Turismo 4. But it's still leagues behind the Forza series. And in November, we had Skyrim VR. Again, it's kind of cheating, like Resident Evil 7 VR. But regardless, it's the only place you can play Skyrim VR on a console. And I've, I've been told that Skyrim VR is... It's a lot of fun, but it's probably the worst way to play Skyrim. And that was 2017 for PlayStation. And as you can see, there was a ton of exclusive games on that list. If you go back to my Xbox and Nintendo podcasts uh, the past two weeks, you're going you're gonna to see that there wasn't nearly as many as what PlayStation had. And I think that's a testament to how, how good they've been this generation in terms of pumping out exclusives, and especially in recent years. At the beginning, I mean, at, really at the beginning, it wasn't much at all, both both Xbox and PlayStation weren't putting out too many exclusives. And now that we're, you know, five years into the lifespan of the console, you're really seeing all these games starting to come out. And again, you're seeing Xbox lag behind a little bit here. But either way, PlayStation had an incredible amount of exclusives and a lot of very good exclusives last year. Let's get into 2018. So let's go into the games and the games that we know. So we know the Shadow of the Colossus remake, the Shadow of Colossus remastered, is coming out in February, on February 6th. Uh, reviews for this game is already out. Um, they're getting extremely high review scores for, for good reason. Shadow of the Colossus is considered to be one of the best games ever by a lot of people. And this game preserves the gameplay exactly the same. It just brings it up to a beautiful visual standard of what uh, 2018 would expect. So it's a really great way to jump back into Shadow of the Colossus. It almost makes me want to buy a PlayStation just so I can play Shadow of the Colossus. We also have the Secrets of Mana remake, which Secrets of Mana is considered to be some one of the best RPGs, again, ever made by a lot of people, and that's coming out in February. And on March 20th, we have Yakuza 6 coming out. Uh, this is a series I'm not too familiar with, but I know that it's a big series for PlayStation, and it's been around for a very long time. And on March 23rd, we have Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom. Which you've played, if you've played the original Nino Kuni, you know that the first one was one of the best RPGs in, in a long time when it came out. It was highly praised, very, very good. So a lot of people are looking forward to Nino Kuni too. It's a game I've always wanted to check out, uh, to be honest, the original Nino Kuni. So it'll be interesting to see how people react to this one. And of course, we have God of War, Sony's big exclusive this year on April 20th. And this is a game I'm really looking forward to. You've got Hipster Dad, Kratos, and his son. I don't know. You, you got to go watch the trailers. It looks really cool. So it looks like the gameplay is still there from the God of War series, but uh, there's a lot more. Not that the original God of War games didn't have story, but, you know, it was kind of like a blind rage kind of thing where you were just killing everything and anything. And now it looks like Kratos is a dad. It's, it's a lot different. It'll be interesting to see how this game turns out. I think it's going to be I think it's going to be excellent. And we have Shenmue 3 in the spring, which... We'll see if this game gets delayed or not. There's no uh, actual date attached to this game yet, but we do know it's, uh, they, did, they didn't mention spring of 2018, so we'll see what happens. The Shenmue series, again, a very old series for PlayStation, but it looks like they're bringing it back into 2018. And that's everything we know in terms of actual release dates for PlayStation. Now, obviously, there's a lot more games announced for PlayStation, which if anyone is kind of a PlayStation follower, they'll know that there's a... There's another list of 10 games or so that we know are coming out, we just don't know exactly when. So we're going to get into those now. So let's go into what I expect for 2018 in PlayStation, and there's three games out of the bunch of games that are announced that I think are going to happen. Or I guess we'll, we'll say four, but um, I'm going to go um, what I expect, we're only going to look at three. So I think Dreams is going to come out in August, and I haven't seen too much of Dreams myself, but I've heard that it's it's, it's from the same people who developed Little Big Planet which I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with, and that was a very, very fun game. Dreams looks like it's kind of a continuation of that, but you can really do anything this time, and that's that's pretty much as much as we know. Again, we haven't seen too, too much of Dreams, but I think that game is going to surprise a lot of people and come out in August this year. As well as Detroit Become Human, it is slated for an early 2019 release date, but again, nothing is set in stone yet, and I think that Detroit Become Human could come, actually come out in December. 
we've seen this game in form of trailers, in form of gameplay, demos for, for years now, and I think that it's ready to come out. Whether it's this year or next year, I do actually expect Detroit Become Human to come out very late this year. I could see it being a December game, to be honest. As well as Spider-Man, which if you haven't seen Spider-Man, you gotta go watch the trailers for it. It looks pretty dope. Um, I think Spider-Man's gonna come out in May. May or June for PlayStation. Um, that's a gap in, in terms of their release calendar. They have kind of something. They have the front half of the year covered from February through April. And if you go back to what I was saying in 2017, Sony was actually pretty light on exclusives once you get into the August-September period. Um, and I think that's smart because that's when all the big third-party games come out. That's when you get your Call of Duties, your Destinies, your Battlefields. Uh, those games that are just going to eat sales. So I think it makes sense for Sony to release games and, and really Xbox, to be honest, as well to release games kind of the front two thirds of the year. All right, and let's get into what I predict is going to happen with all the other games. So we have the Final Fantasy VII Remake, which again, they've been trailering that game for years and years now as well. And they said it's going to be episodic. So what I think is going to happen is that the first episode is going to launch sometime this year. Might be late this year. This, this could even be a November thing, to be honest. Since it's episodic, I don't think it's really going to be impacted by when it releases. It's just going to be, it just whenever it comes out is going to be when it comes out. And I think that episode one could come out this year, very late this year. Days Gone, which I don't know too much about. That's going to come out in 2019, in my opinion. That's going to be a 2019 game. As well as Death Stranding, the uh, Hideo Kojima game. That game isn't coming out for a very long time, people. I'm sorry to say. I'd be very surprised if that game came out next year. I really think it's going to come out in 2020 or even 2021 at that point. For anyone who knows Hideo, he's very, he's very detail oriented, which is fantastic. And his stories are, the stories that he tells are very complex. And he really just started working on Death Stranding, um, officially with his new studio. It would have been, would have been last year, late, la early last year, I want to say. Um, maybe even a couple months before that. It's maybe late 2016. But regardless, he hasn't been working on this game for too long, and it takes him years to make games. Four to seven year dev cycles here, so sometimes even longer. We also have Ghost of Tsushima. I think that could come out in 2019. We have a game called Wild. I think that's slated to come out in 2019. I think that'll stay the same. We also have The Last of Us Part 2. I think that's going to be the big game for Sony next year. That could be a 2019, like a May release date. And then let's get into E3. So what are we going to see at E3 for Sony? I think you're going to see a lot more exclusive content in terms of third-party games. And by that, I mean Destiny 2, Call of Duty, whatever it ends up being. I think you're going to see a lot more of that stuff on PlayStation side. In terms of exclusives, like actual games, Bloodborne 2 has been rumored to be in development. And the original Bloodborne was an early PS4 game, and it's actually one of the higher-rated PS4 games. It's kind of like a Dark Souls it is, it is exactly like a Dark Souls game, which is more of a, a different take on it. Uh, Bloodborne 2, I think, could be announced. As well, PS4 is missing a first-party shooter. If you look at their lineup, they don't actually have like a first-person shooter in there. It's like just a straight shooter game. You have games that involve guns, sure, like Last of Us, but you don't have like a, like a straight first-person or a third, even a third-person, really, a game that's designed to be a shooter. So I think a development studio could take that genre on. Now, you might be thinking of Killzone when you think of Sony shooters. Um, now, the developers of Killzone actually made Horizon, and I think Horizon's a much more steady franchise to work on at this point. It sold more than 3 million copies, which is incredible, especially for a game that doesn't really involve any multiplayer, and I think that that studio is just going to continue to work on Horizon stuff, whether it's the next Horizon game or another expansion. I believe that the last expansion, which was the Frozen Wilds, I think it was called, will be their last one. That came out earlier, or not earlier, sorry, later in 2017. But I think a Horizon 2 is on the works for that studio. But regardless, Sony is missing a shooter. So I think that somebody needs to take that on as well. But there's a lot of games announced here, right? Like we, we went over all of these games for Sony. Um, and, all, and that pretty much covers all the studios that they have, you know, working on stuff at this point. I, I can't really think of too much more. I mean, when you look, when you look about it, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, like 9 games here 10 games really that are slated to come out at some point and that's that's a great lineup so i think that you know maybe another gran turismo game could come out this year i heard that gran turismo sport sold okay so maybe that'll do that'll happen i'm not sure when the next uncharted game will come out that could be at some point but i think they're really just gonna focus on the last of us at this point and that's everything games for sony so let's go over software and hardware which i actually don't have too much going on here I think Sony's going to really stay the course. We know that they have some new controllers coming out some point this year. Um, 
just a slight redesign on them. Nothing, nothing too crazy. It's more about just like the the grip on the controller and stuff like that, and and the design of it. But you know, buttons are still everywhere, and it still exa looks exactly the same as a PS4 controller. Nothing too big there. What do I expect? Well. With PSVR selling millions of units at this point, I think that they're going to continue to release new iterations of PSVR. I don't mean a PSVR 2, I mean a PSVR version 2. And I know that they already kind of did that uh, later in 2017 when they were when they released the new headset and kind of like, oh yeah, this one, you know, it has this upgrade and this upgrade and this upgrade, but da 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 da. I think that they're going to continue to do that kind of stuff. Uh, with PSVR, where they're going to just keep on releasing newer models that have small quality of life improvements and that. You know, it's never going to be a point where your original PSVR headset can't play the games, at the, um, but it's going to, you know, you're going to look at it and be like, oh, wow, this headset has this feature or this feature that makes it a lot nicer or it's, or it's comfier to wear or, uh, you know, less motion sickness, whatever it is. And what do I predict on this front? Well, I think it's pretty safe to say we'll get a PS4 price drop at some point to compete with the Xbox One S as well as a PS4 Pro price drop. And I think this is going to be an aggressive price drop. So right now the PS4 Pro is $399 in Canada. We'll, we'll just say Canadian prices here, right? Actually, no, it's $499 in Canada. My bad. It's $399 in American. So I think that'll actually drop to $399 Canadian, $299 American. It's, I think it's going to drop a full 100 bucks here. And the reason they're going to do that is to really, you know, drive home that, hey, you know, you can get the PS4, the regular PS4 Slim, and that, you know, maybe that'll be $249 or something like that, or even, even $199 or $229 or something. You have a nice, super cheap entry point if you want to play PlayStation games. But hey, you have this awesome supercharged PS4 Pro for $299, right? And that's going to be hard for Xbox to compete with. I think the lowest they can get their Xbox One X in Canadian is $499 and in American $399, right? So they're going to have a full $100, $100 gap there, which they already have, and I think they want to maintain that. And lastly, their PS Now subscription service, it, it can't compete with the current state of Xbox Game Pass, and it it does represent a major revenue opportunity. So for those who don't know, and I didn't mention it on the Xbox show because that was actually a couple weeks ago, and this was before they announced it, but the Xbox Game Pass received a massive upgrade at this point. Every first party Xbox game is going to come out day in, launch day for Game Pass as well. So instead of going to the store and spending $70, $60, whatever it is on a brand new game, if you're subscribed to Xbox Game Pass, which is 10 bucks a month, you have access to those games on launch day. And that's that's pretty incredible. So you're going to get Sea of Thieves, which is coming out in March. You're going to get State of Decay 2. You're going to get Crackdown 3. You're going to get the next Forza game, the next Gears game, the next Halo game, whatever else Microsoft has down their, up their sleeves. Everything's going to come out on Game Pass the same day it comes out on retail. And overall, there's been a lot of good buzz about this move. You know, people are saying, yep, this is the future of games. It does represent more of like a Steam model, which it does need to get to at some point. And it is really reminiscent of what Xbox was trying to present when they first un unveiled the Xbox. But again, we'll get into that in a separate episode. I think this is about PlayStation. But the current PS Now subscription service, it, it doesn't really do the exact same thing as Game Pass. You can stream certain games. You can only stream, like you can't download them like the Xbox likes to do. It's a limited library, and it doesn't really have any big games, especially not the big games coming out right now. Like, you're not going to get Horizon on PS Now, right? So I think that Sony's going to try to improve the PS Now subscription service. I don't know if they're going to go as far as adding their first-party games to it, but maybe they will start to open up the doors and say, okay, actually, you can download your games. And, okay, here, here's this massive back catalog of games. Here are PS4 exclusives that came out earlier in the console generation that you can now get as a part of the subscription service. Maybe like Bloodborne, Killzone game, the uh, infamous game that came out, that kind of stuff. And that's it for Sony in terms of software and hardware. Now, this is a bit of a shorter episode, and, and rightfully so. I don't know as much about PlayStation, but I hope this was still informative for you guys. Overall, PS4 is on pace to sell more than 100 million consoles at this point, possibly sell more than the PS2, which is pretty incredible and that kind of depends on the length of this generation we'll see what happens and if you lump together ps4 and ps4 pro sales they've sold more than 70 million so that's they're they're pretty damn close to reaching the 100 million mark they'll they might even get there next year depending on what happens sony had an incredible 2017 if you if you go back to that list of exclusives i i announced you have gravity rush 2 resident evil 7 biohazard vr yakuza 0 kingdom hearts 2.8 hd tales of berseria neo horizon zero dawn near autonoma MLB The Show, Kingdom Hearts 1.5 plus 2.5 HD Remix, Persona 5, Dragon Quest Heroes 2, Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, 
Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age, Lawbreakers, Uncharted The Lost Legacy, Knack 2, Gran Turismo Sport, Skyrim VR. I mean, when you think about that, that's an awesome 2017. And in terms of 2018, I mean, if you go back to the games I, I talked about, there's a lot of big games coming out. And they have a lot of games that could come out this year, but I think are going to get pushed back to 2019 and beyond. Um, and who knows, maybe some of those games will actually end up coming out. But Sony has plenty of announced games coming out this year and beyond. So really, I mean, when you when you think about it, all Sony needs to do is stay the course and keep on releasing a ton of great exclusives, maybe announce some, like I mentioned before, maybe a Bloodborne 2, maybe a shooter. They need to provide some sort of answer to Xbox Game Pass. They need to improve their PS Now subscription service or axe it and introduce a new one. Xbox Game Pass is going to completely eat the market on this, and it's in t- it's a ton of great press for Xbox. And I think PlayStation will want to answer that at some point. I think they're going to continue to invest in PSVR, and they need to keep doing that. Millions of people have purchased PSVR, and I think they need to continue to support that. There's a lot of cool little indie games coming out for that that I didn't mention. Um, again, I don't know too much about PSVR, but I think getting the support of developers that are de- putting VR components into their games and just making sure that it works flawlessly and seamlessly on PSVR, like what Resident Evil 7 and Skyrim did, I think that is what they're, they're going to keep on doing. And they need to, I didn't mention this before, but they need to stop being so dramatic and allow crossplay. And this is something that people have been asking Sony to do for a very long time. And rightfully so, Sony doesn't need to lift a finger. I mean, they're selling millions of consoles. They're selling millions of games. They're really, I mean, in terms of their business, they do not need to allow crossplay. But it would be a big move for Sony. I think they might want to do that this year. And they don't need to do it with everything, you know. You can start small. Games like Minecraft, Rocket League, even Fortnite. You know, just these small games are not. They're they're pretty big, mind you, right? But they're not like Call of Duty. They're not. They're not Destiny. They're not Battlefield. It's not that kind of stuff, right? You're you're talking about Minecraft, Rocket League, and Fortnite. That you can really start with, and that would generate a ton of good press for Sony if they finally open the doors. Every time that Nintendo and Microsoft come and they talk about crossplay, they're always like, "Oh yeah, we love it." There's just one person who doesn't want to do it. You know, it's like the kid who picks up his soccer ball and walks away at, during recess. You know, it's like, you don't need to do that, man. I understand it's your soccer ball, but come on, you know, you can share it. We all, we all can play soccer. <laughs> There's that analogy. Thank you so much to listening to episode four of the Mythic Pod. I appreciate you guys listening. Uh, any comments or feedback, please reach out to me. You can reach out on Twitter at Mythic United. You can also reach out on Facebook. You can find us there. Instagram, we're posting stuff pretty frequently at this point as well as you can find all of our content at www.mythicunited.com. You're going to find all the podcasts on there. This one, Mythic Music. You're going to get some reviews on there. You're going to get original uh, opinion pieces on there, such as the top 10 anticipated games of 2018, five games that should be remastered for the Nintendo Switch, as well as you're going to get all of our video series. So we actually just recently finished the Halo 4 Legendary series, so that'll be on our website as well. We also have YouTube, so you can find us on YouTube, Mythic United. We stream on Twitch and Mixer. Just search up Mythic United, you'll find us. Thanks again for listening to episode four of the Mythic Pod, and thank you for listening to the mini-series. I encourage you to go back and listen to my Xbox episode and my Nintendo episode, which are episodes two and three respectively of the Mythic Pod. And next week's episode will be a surprise, but it's not going to be along this vein where it's a little more structured in terms of what I'm talking about. It's going to be a bit more of a podcast scenario well we'll talk about kind of one topic um, a little more in depth rather than going over a big console and games that are coming out thank you guys for listening we'll see you next week